Hi guys, in this video we'll be going over three methods of creating maps and any geographical visualizations in Google Sheets. I call these methods the good, the bad and the ugly method. The method that you will choose for your charts uh, really depends on the data that you're using. If your geographical data is very broad, for example uh, countries or uh, capitals of uh, any countries, then you'll be using the good method. If your geographical data is a little bit more specific, like certain regions of certain countries, or maybe even zip codes of certain uh, countries or even states, then you'll be using the bad method. And if it's none of the above, it, if it's extremely specific, some specific regions of a really small country, or maybe even a representation of some fantasy world, for example, the map of Game of Thrones, then you'll be using the ugly method. Now you'll see why I call, uh, I call them like that, but we'll begin with the good method. This method really consists of uh, inserting a chart, a native chart in Google Sheets that represents the geographical data. So if you have country names or states of the US, then you'll be using this method because it works like a charm uh, and you don't have to use any external softwares and it's, it's uh, really visually appealing. So here we have four European countries, France, Germany, Poland, and Spain, and their numerical values representing whatever, maybe density in some of their capitals or, or whatnot. doesn't matter what it represents. So I select the whole data set. I click Insert Chart. And then in the Setup field, I select the map. As you can see, by default, it shows the scale of the whole world earth so to since all of our cities are in europe we can only show the european scale so we go to customize geo and here we have this selection right here so we can choose either world africa asia europe north america south america oceania uh, continents and if we have states of the us we can simply select united states and if we have different state names uh, they will also have their own little borders. So since we're doing, dealing with Europe here, I select Europe. And as you can see, it's already zoomed in. Uh, it's visually appealing and you can change some of the color scales here. So I can change this color of the minimum value. Let's make it very light. And then the maximum value in the same blue, but very dark. If I had more countries, it will be uh, more contrastful. So. If I add, for example, Lithuania 50, it will be the darkest one because this is in, on the far end of the scale. There is not much custom, customizability here, but uh, I think it's uh, good enough. You can change the background color of your chart if you want. A background here means simply the ocean and uh, the border color. You can play around with the colors as much as you like, but this is pretty much the gist of it. So if you're using country names, uh, then I recommend you use this. Also, uh, if you have capital names, it won't represent them just as uh, small uh, blips on the specific country. It will represent it as a whole country. For example, uh, what's a big one? Uh, you, let's go with London, right? You would think that it will be a small blip in the middle of UK. But if I write down London and I write down his value of 80, as you can see, the whole entirety of UK is being marked. So keep that in mind. It won't show specific cities. Uh, if you want cities, then we have our option number two. Moving on to the bad option. Now, the bad method is actually doing the exact same thing but in a desktop excel version if you have the latest version of excel which comes with the microsoft 365 packet or the version before that this method will work wonders uh, if you have an older excel version then this won't work and you'll have to skip to method number three but basically excel desktop version uh, has much more logic behind how it categorizes these geographical names and in this example right here i have a uh, list of german regions some specific geographical regions mm, 
and let's see what it does if I actually create the map. So it's not in between the charts, it's in its own uh, separate map section. We simply add the map, we'll let it do its logic, and it automatically knows that we're in the boundaries of Germany. So it recognizes that we're dealing with Germany's uh, regions, and then it maps out all of the remaining regions as well, um, which is fantastic logic, if you ask me. And the degree of customizability here is uh, bigger. We can uh, play with colors, with backgrounds. We can play with how we want this to be projected. Is it a Mercator projection, which is more uh, uh, vertical, Miller projection? or even Albers, um, then we can select which map area we want to represent. If we select only regions with data, then we only see the regions that actually have data. But uh, I recommend having automatic if your regions are densely located to, to one another. But now let's see what happens if we have all of these German regions. And we also add a region from France, which is another country. We have to specify that this table contains this as well. And now, it, as we can see, it shows uh, the entirety of Europe. Because before, it recognized that we're de dealing with uh, within the boundaries of Germany. Uh, and it could have zoomed in. But now, it sees that it's two different countries. And it has to zoom out uh, to fit the whole European scale. If we do what we did before, we right-click on our visualization format data series and then click only regions with data it will zoom into our regions but we won't see the boundaries between the countries so this might be slightly puzzling there is a workaround for this and actually we can go through it real quickly so right now we have uh, regions of germany and france but we want to see also the outlines of the country to see where they fit and how closely they are to each other so all we have to do is to create another uh, geographical chart exactly the same like we did here but this time we're creating countries we're creating Germany and France both of them we write any values that are exactly the same because we want to, them to be colored in the same way then we click insert maps or set the map just like we did before we right click on our visualization we click format data series and we click only regions with data so we can zoom in on both of these countries. Now what we want to do is to increase the size of this whole thing. We want to delete everything that we don't need to see. Unfortunately, we cannot delete this uh, copyright message, so this one will have to stay. We increase the size. Then we right click once again, we go to series color, and we change the color to be something very neutral. So our lowest and highest values will have to be the same. So let's change it to be um light gray light gray over here and over here now there's one more thing we have to do is we have to format it to have no fill and no outline it's a transparent image of both of our countries now what we need to do is to right click on our first chart with the regions we need to bring it to front so that it's on top of our uh, countries then just like we did with the countries, we go to format, we click no fill, we click no outline. We can delete whatever we don't want to see. For example, I don't want to see the legend. And now I'll have to move and reposition my uh, charts so that their first thing is that their uh, scale is the same. And the other thing is that they are in the correct position. So my good uh point of reference is this big france region right here i think it's good enough uh, i know it's a little cumbersome but uh, once you do this once you don't have to do it again if your geographical data won't change much simply have to select both of these visualizations, right click and then group them. And now it will move just like a single uh, visualization. So if I change anything within my regions, for example, I change the value of Bremen to be 
50, it will act accordingly. So I hope this makes sense. Now, if you want to move this to your Google Sheets, all you have to do is copy this whole image and simply paste it here. Now, why is it called the bad method? Is because this visualization here uh, is not uh, smart. It's just an image. So whatever differences you want to make to your data, you'll have to open up your Excel book once again. You'll have to change it and then copy and paste it once again. So if you do it on a monthly basis or maybe in a weekly basis, then this is not a problem. It's a really short process. But if you want to do this uh, update of this visualization on an hourly basis, then this might become an issue. So this is why this is not the good method. It is a bad method. Um, in quotations marks, of course. Uh, if you're okay with updating it uh, once a week or a month, then the visualizations uh, will come up uh, more precise and you can play around much more with them, as you can see. And also, uh, so moving on to method number three, which is the ugly method. For our final method, we're going to be using a fantasy map. Right here, you see a map of Game of Thrones. On the left, you have Westeros, and on the right, we have Essos, if I remember it correctly. Not much of a fan, honestly. So you can imagine that uh, Excel desktop won't handle this specific information, because if it did, it would be simply mind-blowing. So this is the desperation method. This is the method when you want to plot something that is unplottable, that something is that is unmapped. It doesn't even have to be a map. It can be a picture of anything. So I simply found this picture on the internet. So the method is uh, that we're going to create a bubble chart and we're going to be plotting the X and Y axis for each bubble. And we're going to be adjusting the positions of those bubbles and then we'll be adjusting their sizes and colors. So we need four things, four columns. First one is the x-axis and the y-axis, then the color and the size. So uh, imagine this picture to be a coordinate system. Uh, the horizontal line is the x-axis. It will start from zero and it will be increasing uh, gradually up until whatever value you want. So just for simplicity's sake, we'll say that it's increasing up to 10. So we need the maximum value to be 10 and the minimal value to be 0. The exact same thing we're going to be doing for y-axis, although we can see that the horizontal line is bigger than the vertical line for this specific picture, but it doesn't really matter in our case. So will be 10 and 0. Since these are just the dummy numbers for our visualization to know the scale, we don't need to specify the color and size of this one. All right, next we'll be creating the actual points. So uh, for, for instance, I'll create two points uh, with random numbers. We'll start with x5 and y5, which will be exactly at the center of this map. The color will be one, so it means the first color iteration, and the size will be five. Then the second one we want it to be at the northeast, so uh, x will be somewhere eight, and y will be seven. The color will be two, and the size will be slightly bigger. Well, let's make it uh, eight. We select the whole thing, click insert, and then chart. Next, we select in the setup box, we select uh, this bubble chart. Now we remove everything from this chart. We click on the grid lines, we remove the major grid lines, both horizontal and vertical. We click on the actual chart area and drag it to fill the whole chart box so that nothing else is visible. All right, next, uh, we want the chart style to have no background and no border. You can already see where this is going. Then we fit this box to be exactly the same size as our image, like this. And now we can move around our circles. So for example, if I want to uh, move this big green circle, which is our uh, color two circle down, 
up to this point right here, I would simply have to decrease the Y axis uh, number. So I select this seven right here. If I click it to be five, it goes down. If I want it to be exactly at this city right here, uh, I can decrease it once more. And uh, if I want to be extremely precise, I can even go to decimal spot, spots. So uh, I want to move it slightly to the left. So instead of eight, let's write 7.8 and it moves slightly. Too much, 7.9 fits, fits perfectly. We can add as many points as we want. So we can add uh, another point at uh, coordinates two, two, color three, and the size will be uh, something in between, let's say six. And it appears like this. And uh, with the exact same principle, we can move it around. For example, I want to move this orange spot to be on this city right here. So I move it slightly to the right. So I increase the X uh, value by 0.3, for example. Not enough. Let's increase it by 0.5. And then I want it to go down. So I decrease the Y axis by, let's say, 0.4 up to 1.6. And it's exactly there. If I want to change the colors of these bubbles, then I will also have to fill in the colors of the X and Y axis to be 0 and 0. Uh, then I click on one of these bubbles. I select whatever bubble I want. So let's begin with the first one and then I can change the fill color, color right here. So let's make them all uh, shades of purple. Slightly brighter one and then the last one will be the brightest. All right, and I hope this uh, is clear enough. Uh, these <coughs> This method is called the ugly because you won't see any outlines of specific regions. You can only see the bubbles here, but uh, it works like a charm every time. If these bubbles are enough for you, then you can plot it on pretty much any image that you can find. So, and it also reacts to any data changes that you have. So it's also uh, functional like this. So to conclude, I'll go through the pros and cons of all of three of my methods, and I'll remind you what all of them do so that you know exactly when to choose which method. So the good method, uh, it's uh, using the internal Google Sheets chart plotting. So we simply go insert, we click chart, and then we click on, on the map. Uh, it works like a charm if you have countries, if you have states of the US, pretty much that's it. Um, if your data consists of those points, then it's a no-brainer. You have to use the internal Google Sheets chart plotting. The cons is that it's limited in geodata categorization. This con is eliminated, eliminated with the bad method, which is plotting an Excel desktop version. Uh, it's extremely, extremely intuitive data categorization functionality, and it helps you recognize a wide variety of geo points. Uh, and as you can see, we can even play around with some of its uh, shortcomings with adding additional maps. But the cons is that it's a static image and you'll have to constantly update your information in an external software, which is Excel. And the ugly uh, is a bubble chart on an image. So the pros is that you can plot on absolutely anything. It doesn't even have to be a map. It can be a picture of a tree. If you want to highlight certain points of that tree, for example, and it reacts to your data input. So if you increase the value, it will also increase the size of the bubble. The cons, of course, is that there's no region outlines. You won't be able to specifically show the uh, exact geographical location. Uh, it will all have to be circles or bubbles in this case. So I hope this video helps. Uh, I hope you found something interesting here. And uh, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, to comment, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one.